in this short video I will discuss why the Democratic Party lost the 2016 US elections and indeed they lost to a paleo-conservative alternative right plutocrat in Donald Trump who was the candidate with the highest unfavorable percentages in US electoral history and Democrats lost for a variety of social and economic um, reasons and we'll start off with um, a social issue in which the Democratic Party has an extreme position abortion. Democrats for Life have concluded that this has lost Democratic Party, 13 federal senators, 62 federal house representatives, 31 legislative chambers across the states, and 953 state legislative seats in when all of them are combined, and 14 governorships on top of that. Now this should not be surprising to anyone as a third of the Democratic Party are pro-life and Democrats for life um, clearly disapproved of Clinton and yet that was ignored. An economic issue is the lack of socialism in America and demonstrate this when Obama t took office there were 30,000 cooperatives in America there are now 700, over 700 less at 29,284 and there was no minimum wage raise during Obama's term and there is great D infrastructure in the United States of America. There was the fact that he and Clinton both favoured the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, and the disastrous North America Free Trade Agreement, which has all cost Americans jobs, but NAFTA in particular has been the drain on the American economy, the Canadian economy, and the Mexican economy. And this, along with record 14,500 profits, did not help the mood of the American working class. And then there was the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, which was the Heritage Foundation health plan favoured by um, such um, people such as Newt Gingrich, Richard Nixon, Mitt Romney, the typical corporate shells of the right, instead of single pair, basically Obama's cardus in the first two years um, has contributed to the loss of this election. And as social welfare and food stamps have been cut, corporate welfare, welfare and tax credits to corporations has increased and this on top of the bank bailout has not helped and then there was no restoration of Glass-Steagall regulation which separated commercial high street banking from um, predator investment banking and it's not Democrats who are looking to restore that, it is the Republicans. So that has put the Democratic Party to the right of the Republican Party establishment on that issue. And that did not help, as did fixing primaries against the most popular candidate, Bernie Sanders, and to compound this mistake 
Bernie Sanders was perfect for the white working class base of the Democratic Party, yet people, especially Clintonites, the Democratic Leadership Council, the Democratic National Council, could not see this. And if you look at Bernie Sanders' electoral and political record, he has been representing Vermont since 1990 or 89. I'm not quite sure on when he went to federal Congress, but Vermont has a Democrat graphic percentage of 94% for Caucasian inhabitants of the state and if we look at the town Bernie Sanders was mayor of Burlington similarly there is a high percentage rate 89% Caucasian and you can look up Bernie Sanders record in relation to the state and the, the town um, to see how well he done in both those places and to fix it in favour of Hillary Clinton was a mistake this is someone who boasts that Summondale 2 was her greatest foreign policy achievement now this, some of you may be unfamiliar with this but there was a war in Ireland from 1969 to the late 90s and four, over 4,000 people died yet the peace agreement for that was a restoration of Sunningdale which was basically a transgenous government executive presiding over a physically segregated society and it's basically a nice um, fluffily presented apartheid and in a shorter time space more people in Ireland have died since Sunningdale 2 than died than during all the troubles and that basically over 6,000 people have died since Sunningdale 2 but that's Clinton's greatest foreign policy success but that isn't her only foreign policy disasters, there's Honduras where she brought a genocidal government to power which um, has effectively genocided m much of the working class Hondurans and Honduras is the most violent society in the world with a murder rate of 91 and that's what Hillary Clinton created and we could go to Libya where she overthrew the Jamaharia best country in Africa so it was under um, brother leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi has that reach wage has purchasing power and everyone had a house a job and there was state education paid for whether you want to pursue further education in Libya or abroad yet Hillary Clinton and Obama thought it would be a great idea to arm Al-Qaeda, ISIS and Ansar al-Sharia to overthrow the Jamaharia even though they had intelligence that showed that this would cause a black genocide in Libya and they thought that was a great idea and then there's Syria the disaster of the free groups I mentioned they got armed again in Syria along with other nice people such as Harakat Nur al -Zanke the White Helmet group who chopped off the head of a young Palestinian 
boy for the world to see. Yep, and basically it is known that Syria is a proxy war for the Qatar and Saudi oil pipeline and Murdoch um, exploiting Al Jolin for oil with the help of the illegitimate state of Zionist or the illegitimate Zionist state of Manya Israel, I beg your pardon. And basically there's the issue of the emails which held classified information on private unsecure servers and basically that information was compromised so that's what the Democratic Party establishment, the DNC, DLC thought was going to beat Donald Trump and we've seen how that, we have seen how that's played out also there's the issue which Van Jones raised the white lash and there is demographic tensions in the heterogeneity of the United States while Caucasian population has increased by over five and a half million under Obama it has decreased by 2.24% in the same time and they're projected to be a, a minority in America by 2050 and it wasn't just demographic tensions which caused this white lash it should be pointed out there was a white income decrease by 1.6% under Obama and men in particular had a decrease of their incomes by 2.2% and basically 